I've been uh, very interested in wild tiger conservation and photography for about 13 years now. Uh, my first trip to India was in the year 2000, um, and we travelled to three tiger reserves then, uh, first one being Panna, second being Bandagar, and the third being Kana. Um, I was so thrilled and um, impressed by seeing the tiger in its natural surroundings that I've been going back ever since. And what really started off, I, I suppose, as a, a photography exercise, um, developed into more of the conservation side of things. And now um, I try to be as supportive as I possibly can to two or three um, NGOs, um, Care for the Wild, of course, being, being one. I now go two and three times a year to India, mainly to Ranthambore and uh, Bandagar, uh, which are my favourite tiger reserves. And most of the pictures that you see around here are from Ranthambore and Bandagar. Um, I mean, I can describe one or two of these. I mean, for example, the one that's behind me here, this was taken at Bandagar, I think I might be saying in the year 2007. Um, at the time, I was on an elephant, uh, and I took this picture. What had happened, uh, we had found uh, a tigress with um, three cubs, and it was quite a, a hot day, as I would have expected in here in June. And we followed the tigers um, up a hill to some monolithic caves at the very top. The tigress and two of our cubs went inside, because it was nice and cool in there, of course. Um, and the elephant um, was right outside the cave. And the interesting thing what happened then, <laughs> The elephant reached up with his trunk just above the cave, broke off a small branch, which made a cracking noise, as you can imagine. And with that, these two, two boys came out, and they jumped parallel to my elephant. I mean, it was the biggest shock I think I had at the time, <laughs> as you can probably imagine. And they sat on this, this rock. It didn't actually stop there, because um, if you can imagine, say, a, a little... Uh, domestic cat at home that likes to play with a piece of string and paper. Well, the tiger is very, very similar to that with the elephant. It will get behind the elephant, as this one behind did, to play with the tail. And then, of course, we're in quite a dangerous situation because there wasn't much room for the elephant outside the cave. On the other side, there's a sheer drop. Now, if the elephant had bolted or backed up, I wouldn't be here today. Any questions? I'm quite interested, Michael, in, in the camera that you bought in earlier. So this, uh, this, this is the 500. Camera. Oh this yeah, this is, this is the 500 lens that I use, mainly for distance and so forth, uh, which is um, mm. it's a very nice lens. And uh, I've, um, I've had this now, I suppose, what? Uh, I've had this for a couple of years, I suppose, something like that. I mean, it's great with a tripod, uh, say, Wimbley Head or something like that, which is absolutely great. Uh, but with the 500, um, when I'm in India, I usually use a bean bag from the Jeep. Or if I'm on an elephant, I'm sorry, I don't take that lens, I'm using the 7200 hand holding, and you know, that's, that's, that's fine. You, on the technical side, do you always use the ISO setup? You know, I usually, I'm, I'm, usually, I'm usually on ISO 400, yeah. uh, 5.6 aperture. Um, um, I'm usually in aperture priority. Yeah. Um, sometimes time of priority, depending on the situation. Um, I don't often use manual there because one has to be very, very quick and setting the thing up is easier. I find it easier just to be maybe an aperture priority mainly. Um, but there are occasions, I say, when I switch to time of priority, um, if there's something moving quite quickly, but it's mainly for birds. But for the tiger, um, aperture priority is usually fine. And also focus as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah automatic focus, yeah. Michael, you, I know you've been uh, photographing tigers for 13 years. About 13 so. years, yeah. yeah. What do you think is their future? Think it's a difficult one. I mean, I, I tend to jump from one to the other. I mean, I like to think that there is a future for the wild tiger, not just in zoos and uh, wildlife parks. Um, the problem is, of course, well, it's threefold. I mean, first of all, um, the huge population explosion in India, I mean, there are other countries besides India, of course, that have the tigers, but India has the main population of tigers, the largest population of tigers. Um, now over one billion people in India, 
and I, as I understand it, the population is going to exceed the Chinese population before very much longer, so it is a huge population. India is a large country, as we all know, but all the people there, they want more land to grow their crops, to graze their animals, the cows and things like that, encroaching into the forest all the time, um, which of course pushes the tiger and the other wildlife back. Um, the villagers also illegally go into the forest and they try to take out maybe a, a samba deer or a, a cheetle, probably more likely a cheetle, for their own consumption, uh, which again, so less deer, which means then the tiger will come out and they'll take a cow, come into conflict with the villagers, and then of course they will sometimes take retaliatory action and leave a poison carcass there. And the poor old tiger comes on, maybe the cubs, eats it, and it's dead. Um, the other problem, of course, is poaching, um, which is for the mainly for the Chinese market. Um, the Indians who actually do the poaching get a minimal amount of money for what they do, but the big money, of course, is when it goes through from Nepal to Tibet, and then we're talking about big bucks, probably something like about fifty thousand dollars, you know, for um, a tiger carcass, which is quite a lot of money. What's been your favourite trip? My favourite trip? Yeah. Oh, gosh, that's a difficult one. That is a difficult one. I suppose the time I saw it rained the ball, when I saw Matchley and her three cubs, that was quite something, which is this one here. Uh, that was at Rantham Ball. That was about six years ago, no, five years ago. Um, does anybody, you, you know Rantham Ball, don't you? Um, I know Bandicoot. You know Bandicoot, right. Okay, a random ball, there is uh, an area known as Nelgatti. Uh, it's a, a very deep gorge with a track running up the side of it. And um, we'd been at the lower part taking pictures of a male tiger uh, for 10, 15 minutes. But it was time to leave, it was, it was the afternoon, it was time to leave. So we had to be out of the park by six o'clock, something like that. So we started going up, and there were bends as you go around bends. And we got almost to the top as we went around this bend, and they were coming towards us. Absolutely remarkable. Mother, her name is Matchley, who is probably the most well-known tiger in all of India, if not the world. Um, she's been in lots of films, lots of films we made about this tigress. Um, and those are her three cubs. Um, two of them, well, up until quite recently, two of them were at Ranthambore. One was tranquilised and sent to a place called Sariska, also in Ranthambore, also in Rajasthan, rather. Um, unfortunately, one of them, T17, because they're, they're numbered in Ranthambore, you've got, you've got T17, uh, T18, and T19. Matchley is known as T16, but we always call them Matchley. Unfortunately, T17, it looks as though she has passed away. Um, there are a number of reasons for that, uh, or a number of thoughts about why that's happened. Um, <coughs> some people say uh, that it's because of an injury that she sustained um, a few months ago and she eventually died of that injury. I would question that um, because I know that the Forest Department did in fact tranquilise her when she had that injury. It was quite serious and they treated her and she was getting around. Um, more to the point, I think. Uh, is that she moved to the edge of the park, very, very close to a village, near where illegal mining was taking place. Because a lot of mining goes on out there. This is for, this for rock blasting. And um, people were going out there to try to photograph and, and see Matchley, and uh, not Matchley, T17 and her cubs. Because these three have had this of their own. Um, and I think what has happened, either she's been poached, or probably more likely she's been poisoned by villagers who didn't want people going to that area to see what's going on. But nobody, nobody really knows. We'll never know the truth, I don't think. Do you have any advice for um, maybe people that would want to go and sort of as a tourist holiday to, uh, to places like Banagar or uh, Kana, um, how they might be able to travel in a sort of way that would help? Um, tigers, so uh, uh, what do you do? <laughs> well, um, there is um, TOFT, as you probably know, um, a, a tiger organisation. Those, those um, 
hotels, lodges that are signed up for Tom. It is very much um, sustainable tiger trap. Um, they do the right things. The, the problem, some of the problems I've seen at Corbett in particular, um, are where the jeeps charge along and where they're jockeying for position all the time. And tigers are trying to cross from one side to the other. And they won't let the tiger cross. Um, there's some pretty horrendous, I've seen, I've seen some pretty horrendous things occasions. Um, I was at Bandigar on one occasion, I was on an elephant, uh, we were following the Sidabala uh, tigers, and she's passed away since. And um, we were following the tigress, there were about, probably about 30 or 40 jeeps on the track uh, behind us, and all of a sudden, bang, they were just shunting into one another, it's crazy. It has improved since then, as you probably know, I mean now they've reduced the number of jeeps going in there, and also going into different zones, of course, which again, I think is probably a good thing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there are companies who do the right thing, um, but I think, generally speaking, it tends to be more the, the drivers or guides, because they're looking for the tips. They're very, you know, money orientated. I mean, you can understand it, they don't earn very much money, and they're looking for the tip. They get a really good sighting for a tourist, they get a better tip. They don't get much of a sighting for tourists, they don't get much of a tip, and that's what it's all about. Uh, well, again, thank you, and, just, you know, just... By all means, enjoy what's hanging on the walls. And if you've got any other questions, might Yeah, I'm around for a while, so.